Good. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Gerard Conway. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist. Um, and we're going to do a segment now on um, hirsutism, common problem, nearly always related to polycystic ovary syndrome. Um, and I thought that I would just draw a quick picture of the uh, physiology here, and then we'll go into how to um, uh, how to uh, easy easy treatments. Okay, um, everything of course revolves around the pilosebaceous unit in the hair in the skin. Um, each pilosebaceous unit is lined with cells. Um, and they are sensitive to testosterone. Testosterone, if they're sebum cells, they will make sebum. If they're hair follicle cells, they'll grow hair, will be more pigmented um, and longer and grow faster. So the only real way of interfering with the growth pattern of hair is to block testosterone or reduce testosterone. Um, there is a factor we can't control, and that is on each of these cells are receptors, uh, and people vary as to how sensitive your receptor is to testosterone. That's genetically programmed, it's in the androgen receptor, and you can't do anything about it. And that's the reason why some people get quite a lot of hirsutism, but with very little testosterone in the circulation. They've just got extremely sensitive um, uh, uh, receptors. Doesn't mean you can't do anything, it just means that your likelihood of altering growth pattern with testosterone is less. So with testosterone, well, the, the, the phases here, I'll add another phase because testosterone is converted to DHT and that's the final ligand for the receptor. So you can do several things. You can block the re at receptor level and that is your um, uh, competitive antagonist. Cyproterone acetate is one, spironolactone is another. Not worth using them together, of course. You have to choose one or the other because they may co-compete. You can convert the, the um, uh, testosterone to DHT step, dihydrotestosterone. That's the enzyme 5 alproductase And there is a, a, a drug called finasteride and its cousins that will block that step. And then if you want to reduce testosterone in the circulation, nearly all of the, or the majority of testosterone in women comes from the ovary. So it's a matter of switching the ovary production of testosterone. Often the easiest way to do that is the oral contraceptive pill. So you can see that by combining these effects, your oral contraceptive pill reduces gonadotrophins, stops testosterone secretion, limited, it doesn't stop it completely. 5 alpha reductase will block what's left from being converted to DHT and your competitive antagonists um, will block what's left. So you can have a triple hit for people with really difficult problems. And the, and the one that's really difficult to treat, the one that is a uh, testosterone related symptom is, is actually androgenic hair loss. Um, hirsutism is usually quite quick to respond. Acne, another testosterone sensitive symptom is, is very quick to respond. So my usual habit is to combine an oral contraceptive pill, usually a generic one rather than Cosiprindiol and Dianet, um, and Cyprotra and Spironolactone would be my favorite for fewer side effects. And then, if six months later you've had no impact, I would usually add in low dose finasteride because multiple hits are better than any one hit. So, that's a quick sketch through the fundamentals of hirsutism um, and using a combined approach. But don't forget, hair follicle growth cycles are slow. So you're not going to have much impact inside three months. Um, and you really see the big impact between six and 12 months. So you're looking at fairly long-term treatment and all of it not compatible with fertility. Okay, I'll sign off there. We can do the specifics of the treatment another day.